our lead this hour coming from Foxborough. And not from New York, so you have Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, but an indirect, I said indirect way to get to Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. So there, there's a, a story that we talked about several months back that has popped back up on our radar. What is that story? Well, the story which originated from uh, Craig Carton, the uh, guy that quit radio to go do the, uh, the TV thing at Fox. So he's got a show. He reported that the Patriots attempted to trade for Aaron Rodgers, that the effort was made. Now, Rodgers was said to be not interested in playing in New England. That was the reporting, and the story stopped right there, and we moved on with our lives, and that was that. Well, not everyone moved on with their lives. Rodgers is playing with the Jets, and Bill Belichick was asked in his weekly paid radio spot, on EEI there in Boston was asked about the rumor about Bill Belichick uh, having interest in Aaron Rodgers. And Belichick himself was asked, if you didn't hear what he had to say, maybe not, maybe you missed it. The Patriot coach, Bill Belichick, swears, swears that he did not reach out directly to Green Bay. Let's go to the audio tape. I personally couldn't speak to that. Look, there's a lot of conversations in the offseason between our personnel people and other executives. Um, I, I mean, I don't know what what, what he's really talking about. I, I personally didn't talk to the Packers about Aaron Rodgers, no. Certainly makes this division tougher. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, look, it's not. I'm not saying about I mean, Aaron Rodgers is a great player, but yeah. that's not really, you know, that wasn't anything that we were, uh, that I was aware of. Uh, you got to listen closely to the words here because we're going to parse the words. So let us discuss the question, how believable, how believable was Bill Belichick in the soundbite that you just heard right there with his Aaron Rodgers trade denial? So I have custom embroidery, National Goose Protection Coalition, and two-ounce cup. And we will combine all of these things together, and we are going to make a money ball, because I am money ball maller. Swoosh. Just like that. So, uh, to begin here, number one. Number one. It's waiting for Chris there. A little late on the... Be quicker. Number one. Number one. All right. So Bill Belichick was unconvincing, is the word I will use. He was unconvincing with his dialogue when asked about the Aaron Rodgers trade, which is not surprising, uh, the, the commentary from Bill Belichick here. This was the only way you could answer the question. If Belichick does not answer the question, gives a no comment, and does that, which he's also done many times, that implies that he's covering something up that he knows about, so he doesn't want to talk about it. If he confirms that the Patriots tried to get Aaron Rodgers, well, that's a humdinger of a story. All right? That also shows that you have qualms about Mac Jones, that you're not keeping up with the Joneses, your own quarterback. So what Bill Belichick did is he practiced some custom embroidery. Now, what do we mean by that? It means that Bill Belichick attempted to thread a needle, a little needlepoint action, threading a needle, if you will, and Belichick used weasel words. Pop goes the weasel. Yeah, weasel words. He said he personally did not engage the Packers. He never said the Patriots did not engage the Green Bay Packers. He just said he personally did not do it. That does not mean that Belichick did not deputize some underling to have dialogue with the Green Bay Packers and do the dirty work for Belichick. He's much too important to have to make those phone calls. Don't you know who he is? Uh, So that gives Bill Belichick plausible deniability. Plausible deniability, and uh, he wasn't technically lying when he said that he personally did not reach out to Green Bay. He just omitted some things that actually took place. So if you haven't figured out yet, I believe that the Patriots did consider Aaron Rodgers. Why would they not? They don't have a quarterback. Mac Jones is a stiff And so Rodgers is someone that Bill Belichick has slobbered all over for many, many years. 
Why would you not consider that possibility? It would be negligence by the Patriots to not consider that possibility. Now, page two, turning to Lost Wages Nevada, the gambling mecca of North America, but the gambling world is everywhere these days, sports gambling in particular. But we are told that Josh Jacobs, he's our running back, Josh Jacobs has decided he will put the kibosh on his issues with the Las Vegas football team. Jacobs expected to report to camp before the Raiders open the regular season. Of course, it is unknown when, when exactly that will be for Jacobs, who led the NFL in rushing yards last season, breakout year, and wanted to get paid a lot of money. The Raiders said, uh, we're good. We, we don't want to pay a lot of money over the long term. Sorry about that. And so... He has to show up by week one. Otherwise, he will start giving back money. And that's the rub on this. So let us discuss what has led here to Josh Jacobs planning to end his contract kerfluffle with the Raiders. So I'm going to blame the National Goose Protection Coalition. Why am I blaming the National Goose Protection Coalition, because uh, Jacobs is looking to protect the Golden Goose. And he wants that 401k within the margins, and the way you do that is you uh, show up to camp. Otherwise, Jacobs would have had to give back a game check every week, some of that $10.1 million of the franchise tag that the Raiders gave him, and you don't give back money that's yours that has your name on it. We all know that. And so Jacobs decided, I'm not going to do that. Now, soon as he ends the stalemate and reports to duty for the Raiders, uh, Jacobs will have to, of course, put his tail between his legs and walk into the Raider facility. Uh, What kind of attitude is he going to bring? Is he going to bring the tood? Uh, we We will find out. Does Jacobs bring hostility inside the building? Will he be an enemy combatant? Upset that he did not get a new contract, did not get the money that he wanted from the Raiders. Uh, is he going to, to bring that inside the facility? Or uh, will Jacobs be able to compartmentalize, calm down, right? Does this spill into more turmoil for the silver and black? Because I'm all there for the turmoil. I get a big bucket, big bucket of popcorn. I'm right there for the turmoil. Uh, we will see. Now, final point, final point. So let's go to Washington. And we mentioned this last hour in the B block, but we'll mention it now. If you did not watch, it was a Monday night exhibition game, and uh, I got suckered into that. I flipped over from the baseball for a little bit, watched a little piece of it. Sam Howell, the great Sam Howell, was officially named the starting quarterback of the Commanders last Friday. We were away from the watchtower here at Fox Sports Radio on Friday, but the Washington football team announced that the great Sam Howell would be starting. Where have you gone, Joe Theismann? Well, now you've got Sam Howell as your quarterback. Uh, And so that news came out. And then Sam Howell went out and had a monster mash of a first half for the Washington football team. I don't know if you saw it or not, or you saw the box score and The uh, commanders moving the ball, matriculating the ball up and down the field. Sam Howell playing the entire first half for the Raiders, uh, for the Raven against the Ravens for the Commanders. Get the teams right, Uh, but for the Commanders against the the Ravens and Sam Howell uh, attempted 25 passes. He completed 19 of them for 188 yards. Had a great passer rating. Solid numbers across the board. Washington led the game at halftime when Howell exited stage left. And they would go on to win the game on a late field goal against Baltimore, ending that 24-game practice season winning streak for the Ravens. And immediately this led to over-the-top gushing about Sam Howell. They found something. He's got the magic. These are the kind of comments that were bouncing around the echo chamber after an exhibition game. Not a regular season game. Not a regular season game. We're talking about an exhibition game. So, what are your reactions to Sam Howell getting hyped up there in Washington? So, my initial reaction is the P word. Predictable. This is a predictable situation. The overreaction machine gets cranked up. 
And that happens all the time. But listen, Howell looked like a cool customer. He also sounded like a total meathead in his interview. He got interviewed on the Monday Night Broadcast. And I thought, well, this guy uh, has the, uh, the I think Marcel could, uh, could beat him in the uh, IQ test. Unbelievable. Um, anyway, so with that being said, uh, yeah, I know. Calm down, Marcel. I'll give you a shout out, okay? Uh, he played well. So I give Sam Howell uh, whatever. I don't give him credit because it's a practice game. And the one thing I've learned as a degenerate gambler over the years is to not put any stock in exhibition football. It gets you get a little confidence. Right? It's like somebody leading the Cactus League in home runs and saying they're going to lead the American League in home runs. It, generally speaking, does not happen. Uh, and so I, I take all of this with a two-ounce cup of mouthwash. And uh, it's a dummy run. You gargle and you spit it out. You gargle, you rinse, you spit it out and get ready for the regular season. Uh, the Ravens were throwing out vanilla bean defense. And the Ravens' uh, opponent, the Washington football team, was playing a very generic brand of offense and defense. And that's what's supposed to happen. Now, let's see. Sam Howell has a very good start to the season. He has another practice game in the regular season, September 10th. The Washington football team opens up with the team projected to be the worst team in the NFL this year, the Arizona Cardinals. So if Sam Howell does not dominate the Arizona Cardinals, you got something wrong with that. And then they, I believe, play the Broncos in week number two, Washington does. So that's that's two winnable games. So Washington has a shot to get out to a good start this year, and Sam Howell can get some confidence. But does that mean it's going to happen because he played well against the Ravens? No, of course not. 